Hello everyone. Welcome to MBBS classes. Today, in this video, I'll talk on tympanometry. Tympanometry is one of the tool to assess the hearing. It is an objective test for audiological evaluation. So, audiological test batteries, they are divided into two groups, subjective test and objective test. Among the subjective test includes behavioral observation of audiometry, tuning fork test, pure tone audiometry, and speech audiometry. Among the uh, objective tests for the audiological evaluation includes tympanometry, which we'll be discussing in this video. The other objective tests are audi or auditory brainstem response, which is called ABR or BERA, and autoacoustic emissions. Tympanometry, it is defined as the dynamic measure of acoustic emittance in the external ear canal as a function of changes in air pressure in the ear canal. It is a test which, which is used to test the condition of the middle ear and the mobility of the tympanic membrane and the middle ear ossicles. That is the tympanic whole tympanic cavity by creating variations of the air pressure in the ear canal. Since it is a subjective test, before for the hearing evaluation, the puritan audiometry used to be done. The puritan audiometry, it tells us about what is the type of hearing loss, whether it is conductive hearing loss or it is sensory neural hearing loss. But the puritan audiometry, it fails to tell us about the nature of the disease. So, to know about the nature of the disease of the middle ear, tympanometry is useful to find out the pathology. So, what is the basis of acoustic emittance in the auditory system? Emittance means resistance or we can say it impedance. The opposite of emittance means admittance. Admittance means the ease with which the energy is flowing. So, how it is done? It is based on the amount of sound reflected back from the tympanic membrane when an 85 decibel sound pressure low frequency tone of around 226 hertz is introduced into the sealed ear canal and the pressure in the ear canal is varied. So, what does it mean? For doing the tympanometry, a probe is introduced into the ear canal to form a tight seal and through that probe, the pressure changes is done in the ear canal, tone is delivered and the amount of sound which is reflected back is also calculated. So, the amount of sound which is reflected back from the tympanic membrane is known as SPL that is the sound pressure level. So, the basis of tympanometry is the calculation of your impedance. So, how we can measure the impedance by, uh, by calculating the SPL? It means that suppose if energy is freely flowing through a system, in, in this case it is a sound energy which is given into the ear. If, if this energy is going very thoroughly to the tympano-ossicular chain, then that means a very little energy will be reflected back. So, SPL is proportional to the emittance in the middle ear system. So, what is SPL? It is the degree to which the middle ear permits the flow of acoustic energy determines how much energy is reflected from the membrane? So, to understand, for a given force, in a tympanometry, the force is the sound energy. When the sound energy is introduced into the ear canal, if the tympano-ossicular chain has greater admittance, that means the energy is growing freely, which in the other means, we can say, if it is having a greater admittance, it means that there is less impedance or there is less resistance. So, when there is a less resistance, 
the sound will be flowing freely so very less amount of sound will be reflected back from the tympanic membrane which is calculated as spl so in a case of greater admittance or less resistance the spl value calculated is low vice versa if there is a greater resistance that that means in the tympano ossicular chain system if there is too much of resistance which is not allowing the sound to pass through nicely then the greater amount of energy will be reflected back from the membrane that means the value of spl will be large so by changing the pressure in the sealed auditory canal and then measuring the reflected sound energy it's possible to find the compliance or that or the stiffness of the tympano ossicular system and to know whether the status of the middle ear system is normal or it is diseased so i repeat if the tympano ossicular chain system is having some disease or if is having some resistance to the flow of energy the spl value will be higher if the spl value is higher that means the sound which is reflected is higher that means the system tympano ossicular system is having some greater resistance if the sound is flowing very nicely through the system then the spl value will be low that means the compliance is more and the resistance is less in the system so all these figures they are calculated and they are plotted in a chart called tympanogram so what is the purpose of tympanometry so as we know that the pyotonic audiometry will tell us about the type of hearing loss whether it is conductive hearing loss or it is sensory neural hearing loss moreover pyotonic audiometry will tell us about the degree of hearing loss but it fails to tell us about the type of pathology so in those cases the tympanometry helps so it is used for assessing the presence or absence of middle ear pathology secondly it is used for assessing the probable type of pathology if in audiogram it is showing conductive hearing loss then by doing the tympanometry we'll be able to know that what is the reason there are so many reasons for conductive hearing loss so tympanometry can help us whether there is any tympanic membrane perforation there is ossicular discontinuity or ossicular fixation and moreover it also helps us to assess the mobility of the middle ear ossicles the indications it is done in those cases where the tympanic membrane and the middle ear space it appears normal but the audiometry it shows conductive hearing loss so if we do the audiometry in one patient if it comes as conductive hearing loss and then next step if we do the tympanometry will be able to know the type of pathology in the middle ear tympanometry is meant for assessing the middle ear system to document the presence of middle ear fluid if on otoscopic examination if we see that there is some collection in the middle ear cavity to document it tympanometry is helpful it gives a definite b type of curve lastly to evaluate patients who are complaining of fullness of the ear but when the audiometry is normal there are certain informations which we get by doing the tympanometry we come to know about the intratympanic pressure the eustachian tube function so indirectly by doing the tympanometry we can know whether the eustachian mm -hmm. tube is functioning well or not it is ventilating the tympanic cavity regarding the integrity of the tympanic membrane the mobility of the tympanic membrane whether there is any scarring of the uh, tympanic membrane we can know by doing the tympanometry and lastly about the status of the ossicular chain so this is how a tympanometry instrument looks like the history of tympanometry it's is it's about a century old but nowadays the instruments they are calibrated so 
this is the probe. This probe, this is the ear probe which is fitted into the patient's ear canal. The probe is a single probe but it has three channels. The, the first channel is to deliver, it delivers a tone of frequency 220 hertz. Most of the tests are done using this low frequency hertz tone. Second channel of this probe, it picks up the reflected sound through the microphone. That means whatever sound is reflected back from the tympanic membrane is collected by this probe and it is calculated as SPL that is the sound pressure level and the value of the SPL tells us about the resistance or the compliance of the tympano ossicular system. And the third channel of the probe, it brings about the changes in the air pressure from the positive to normal and some and negative changes in the ear canal. So as you can see in this uh, figure that this probe, this is the probe which is fitted in this manner. It should fit uh, very uh, snugly to the uh, ear canal. There should not be any gap and it is fitted into the ear canal in this manner. So what is the method? For doing a tympanometry, the room should be moderately quiet room. That, that means the noise level should be less than 50 decibel. Before introducing this probe, we ask the patient to avoid unnecessary movement of the mouth oral cavity to avoid speaking and swallowing after the probe is fitted so that the effects of the eustachian tube function, they are not altered. Then the probe is fitted into the ear canal to form an airtight seal. A tone of, a, a tone of 85 decibel at 226 hertz is generally used for the testing. Air pressure is varied in both the negative and the positive directions. A tone is delivered and what the amount of acoustic energy reflected from the eardrum is measured. So after getting the all the recordings, the graph which is plotted, it looks like this and it is known as tympanogram. So this is a model of the tympanometry report which is given to the patients. It includes the data, patient's data, age, gender, notes like what is the type of uh, what is the type of graph what is the type of reflexes so what are the parameters which are examined during the tympanometry these are middle ear pressure that is the peak pressure compliance or admittance ecv means ear canal volume gradient tympanometric width and lastly the stipedial reflexes so these five things we come to know after doing the tympanometry. So as you can see in this tympanogram, so we can see here ECV is written 0.97 ml, which means the ear canal volume. Compliance means or compliance or admittance is also measured in milliliters. Compliance is plotted in the y-axis and the pressure if, if you see here, this is the x-axis which includes uh, pressure and gradient or the tympanometer width. So as you can see here, this is a tympano, uh, tympanogram of the right side, right and left is written. Y-axis or the vertical axis, it shows compliance values and the horizontal axis, it shows the pressure values. So as you can see here, there is one square and this is the graph. So if we look into the readings of the tympanogram, this peak of the graph is coming approximately at around little bit on the left side of the zero. That means the zero pressure. So the pressure is around minus one DAPA, which means deca pascal. This measurement of the pressure, the, uh, measure, the unit is deca pascal. We'll come to we'll discuss about the tympanometry subsequently. So coming to the parameters in details. So compliance, 
the other name is acoustic admittance that means the ease with which the energy the sound flows through the middle ear system it is plotted on a chart which is known as tympanogram as i told you the compliance is plotted in a y axis or the vertical axis the maximum compliance occurs when the pressure in the middle ear cavity is equal to the pressure of the external ear so the normal values of the compliance at using 226 hertz tone is 0.3 to 1.6 cc or ml so we have to know the normal values because if we know the normal then only we'll be able to understand what is abnormal so what are the conditions with abnormally low compliance if we get in a tympanogram very low compliance values then we have to think of otitis media otosclerosis cholestatoma as differential diagnosis a tympanogram with abnormally high compliance that means the compliance values it crosses the compliance values of the instruments that is beyond 1.6 then we have to think for the ossicular discontinuity so for reading a tympanogram we have to look into the individual parameters of tympanogram the first thing is compliance next we have to see for ecv that is the ear canal volume ear canal volume is the volume of the ear which is calculated from the probe tip to the tympanic membrane and if there is a perforation of the tympanic membrane then ecv it includes the volume of the external ear and the middle ear also with an intact tympanic membrane for a normal range of ecv in children it ranges from 0.3 to 1 uh, cc in adults it ranges from 0.6 to 1.75 so again these are the normal values any values which is lower than for the respective age is abnormal so is we call the ecv too large volume ECV is more than two milliliter in children, and it is more than two point five in adults. So, what is the significance of this ECV? Now, let us see. If in a tympanogram, if we see that the ECV volume is too less, like in children, if it is less than point three, and in adults, if it is less than point six, it means a clogged probe tip. or a probe tip which is pushed against the wall of the ear i there may be an impacted uh, wax in the ear or there is some kind of blockage in the ear canal and or if there is the myringotomy tube which is closed so what are the things which we have to think of when we get too large ecv that means values more than 2 ml in children and more than 2.5 in adults so the the reason may be of large ecv there may be a perforation of the tympanic membrane patent in situ myringotomy tube or there is an absence of the seal that means the seal is not properly fitted in the ear canal so let us see the different cl clinical situations which we we may encounter while reading a tympanogram and why we have to look for ecv why we have to look for ecv is that because whenever the tympanogram is given as a report it is always given in terms of types of tympanogram whether it is a b or c type it never but it is our duty to look into the ecv in situations where we are getting a flat tympanogram as you can see here we are getting three horizontal graphs lines the the lower most is showing a figure of 0.15 it is showing the ecv values then the middle it is showing the values 1.3 and the top most this line is showing ecv 5.2 so 
generally v nomenclature of the type of the tympanogram is given according to the shape we call type b tympanogram with a flat curve so all these three can be called as flat that means type b tympanogram but to call as a type b tympanogram we also have to look into the ecv values reason is here the ecv value is too high it is more than 2.5 and if it is more than 2.5 which means that there is a hole in the tympanic membrane so it is also coming as b type but it is not actual b type so we have to be aware in clinical settings in otitis media with a fusion we get this type of typical type b graph but here the ecv value is within the normal range so type b tympanogram cannot be blindly attributed to the middle ear effusion unless we know the ear canal volume so we have to be careful while reading a tympanogram next parameter which we have to see is the pressure peak so if you if we read this tympanogram you can see here this is the pressure values along the horizontal axis in the decapascal this curve this is the curve this graph if you see it is a it has a certain peak so this peak it is the point the peak at which this value corresponding value of the y axis is known as compliance values the the point at which the peak occurs this is the compliance value so here if we see that the compliance value will be around your 1.59 so and if we look into the ear canal volume it is 1.4 which is normal and the peak is occurring at the 1.59 so what is the pressure peak pressure peak it is the pressure at which the maximum admittance or there is a maximum compliance of the energy so it the normal values of the pressure peak it can vary from minus 50 to plus 50 so if there is anything in between this range it comes as it is counted as normal when we call it abnormal is when the pressure when this graph is towards more towards the negative pressure that means when the compliance is more towards the negative side that means we there is some eustachian tube disorder so negative peak pressure is seen in eustachian tube disorder next parameter is the gradient you can see here in circle the gradient here it is 0.42 if you notice here the gradient is 0.28 and these two graphs they are not similar gradient means the tympanometric width or we can say that it is the relation between the height and the width of the graph the flatness of a tympanogram is quantified by its gradient the gradient is quantified in terms of deca pascal which is measured at one half the compensated admittance so remember higher the values of gradient steeper is the tympanogram and smaller is the value the flat is the curve so remember higher the values see here see the difference the gradient is 0.4 the graph is more steep here the gradient is less the graph is little bit shallow or flatter next parameter which can be studied in a tympanometry is the stapedius reflex or we call it acoustic reflex middle ear muscle reflex it is an involuntary muscle contraction that occurs in the middle ear in response to the high intensity sound stimuli or when the person starts to vocalize stapedius reflex is not discussed in details in this video i'll be discussing in next video on stapedial reflex till now we have seen the different parameters of the tympanogram that means about the compliance pressure peak 
gradient, ear canal volume, and the acoustic reflex. But when a report comes, report comes as different types of tympanogram. So the types are divided into type A, type B, type C. Type A has again two variations, type AS and type AD. So if you can see here, type A is, uh, you can say a normal tympanogram. Type B is a little bit flatter curve. Type C, if you see here, the compliance is more towards the negative pressures area. Then the type A is, if we see that the pressure area is normal, but the compliance value is less. And type AD, the compliance value exceeds the limit of the equipment. So let us see what is a type A tympanogram. Type A tympanogram, it represents a normal middle ear function. A type A curve has normal mobility and normal pressure. So if you see here, this is a type A tympanogram. This is a normal tympanogram. To be classified as normal, the location of the compliance peak, this, this is the compliance peak. If you see here, this is the peak of this graph. This location of the peak on the pressure dimension and the height must be within the normal range. So to call it as a normal, we have to see whether the peak is within the normal pressure range and it is the at the normal height. So this is a type A tympanogram which is showing a, a value of ECV 1 cm cc which is normal. Pressure peak is around 0.5 which is also again within the normal range. The gradient is 85 decapascal which is normal. What impression we get from this type A tympanogram if it is reported? It means either the patient uh, particular ear is a normal hearing ear or or ha is having a sensorineural hearing loss with normally functioning middle ear system. There are two subcategories, AD and AS. So, this is an AS type of tympanogram. If we see here, to remember, remember that AS S stands for steep and D stands for deep. So, the AS type, it represents the abnormal stiffness in the middle ear system. Here in the AS type of the curve, the pressure, peak pressure will be in the normal range, but the compliance value, the compliance value is calculated in the y-axis. The compliance value are very low. So AS type of curve, if we get, it is suggestive of ossicular chain fixation or autosclerosis. This AD curve, if, we, if you see here, the peak is exceeding the limits, upper limits of the compliance. So, if we get a curve like this in a tympanogram, it is suggestive of tympanic membrane and ossicular chain hypermobility. So, th these are the two tympanograms given for better understanding. If you see here, the compliance value is crossing the upper limit. Here, this is the upper limit. This is this square, it represents the normal range. So it is crossing the values. It is an AD type of curve. Here, the curve is within the normal pressure area, but the value is very low. If you see here, the peak is 4.5 centimeter square that means value is too high compliance value is too high and here it is 0.2 it is too low flat type of curve tympanogram is known as type b tympanogram in the type b tympanogram there is no pressure peak if you see that in the this is a uh, automatic report tympanogram of type b tympanogram this is the flat type of curve the peak there is no peak. NP, there is no peak. It represents the restricted tympanic membrane mobility with reduced compliance, which is suggestive of some stiffness in the middle ear system. 
So conditions where where we can get the type B tympanogram, we can get it in otitis media with effusion, some space occupying lesions of the tympanic cavity, and in case of tympanic membrane perforation. The third type of tympanogram which we may get is the type C tympanogram. In type C tympanogram, there is a peak. In type B, we don't get a peak, but in type C, we get a peak, but the peak it falls in the negative pressure area that means beyond minus 150 decapascal. If you see this tympanogram, the peak is there, but it is, it is beyond minus 200. The peak is coming at around minus 245 decapascal. So, what does it suggest? It suggests negative pressure in the middle ear cavity, which is found in eustachian tube dysfunction and in early stages of otitis media without effusion. So, we can see here by looking at the type of tympanograms, by looking at the different parameters, ear canal volume, gradient, pressure peak and compliance, we come to know about so many different type of middle ear pathologies. So, for, for the treatment purpose of view, if the pressure peak is more negative than minus 200 decapascal, it is, the per, uh, it is clinically significant for considering it for treatment. With this, I come to the end of this video. Thank you for watching this video.